as we are recording this, the heart is pumping very fast, thinking about how Chandrayaan-3 will play out. Will there be a soft landing as it's widely expected or will there be some unfortunate happening? We don't know. But even as this excitement is being played out, there is another little thing popping up from ISRO. What is it? It is the Sun mission. It is ISRO's Aditya L1 mission. ISRO's chairman, Mr. Somnath, recently said that the Aditya mission is expected to be launched from Sriharikota by the end of August or early September. Now, what is this Aditya L1 mission? It is meant to monitor the sun from a particular vantage point in space called L1. What is L1? It's one of the five Lagrange points in the Sun-Earth system. A Lagrange point between two massive objects like the Sun and Earth is a point where if you place an object, it will be kind of, it will stay put there because the pull of one object will balance out the pull of the other object and therefore the object will rather be stable. Now this Aditya L1 spacecraft is going to be placed at L1. By the way, there are five Lagrange points in the Sun-Earth system, L1, L2, L3, L4 and 5. And L1 is a point between the Sun and the Earth. Closer to the Earth, of course, it is 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. At this point, this spacecraft, Aditya L1, will be orbiting an invisible center, will be going round and round but will always be looking at the sun. That is this mission. Now, several questions arise out of this. Why are we so bothered about the sun? All of a sudden, why should we be monitoring the sun? And if we have to be monitoring the sun, can we not do it from here? These are the questions we will try to address in this video. This Aditya L1 mission has its genesis some, sometime around 2006, 2007, when a group of Indian astrophysicists made a presentation to India's space agency, ISRO, saying that we must have a spacecraft monitoring, looking at the sun. Now, at that point in time, the idea was that this spacecraft could be positioned in the low Earth orbit, which is something like 200, 300 kilometers above Earth, maybe going up to 500 kilometers, somewhere in that band, that could be imaging the sun, that is simply taking pictures of the sun. But then, Professor U. R. Rao, a very well-known uh, Indian astrophysicist, he suggested that we should not have a spacecraft just in the LEO orbit, but we should have one at the Lagrange point. So after that, the scope of the spacecraft was expanded to include more and more functionalities to it. And then it has slowly developed into the one that we are talking about today, which is Aditya L1. There are two reasons. One is a short-term reason, the other is a long-term reason. Let's look at the short-term reason first. We are sending up satellites all the time. There are all kinds of satellites and more and more and more thousands of satellites are ready to be launched for various purposes. The sun is a very active celestial body, very active star. Oh, by the way, let me explain. The sun is not a solid mass, solid ball like the earth is. It is a huge ball of gases. So there are different layers, one over the other, and they all dif behave differently. And then outside this ball of gas, which is the disk of the sun, there is this corona. Now, the sun, is, sun, as I said, is very active. It keeps violently ejecting energetic particles, and they blow all over the universe. A lot of them come towards the Earth. And because Earth has a magnetic field, these particles get deflected towards the poles uh, and therefore we are sort of protected from the effects of this uh, radiation. But then there are so many other things like coronal mass ejection, which is ejection of mass out of the sun. Just the sun throws away billions of tons of material mass and that can go anywhere. That can come towards the earth, it can cause harm. So it was thought that it would be prudent to have some system, some way of predicting these solar storms. If there was some way of predicting solar storms, we can sort of protect our 
space assets. That is a short term benefit. For the long term, it has been known for some time that the radiation from the sun, particularly the ultraviolet radiation, it has an effect on Earth's climate over long periods of time. So it is again wise to study what is happening. Where does this ultraviolet radiation come from? So now, what is there in Aditya L1 that makes all this possible? Aditya L1 has seven different instruments with different purposes. Some capture the light from the sun, visible light on one end of the spectrum, infrared on the other end, ultraviolet. They pick up all this visible and invisible radiation and then they analyze. And there are other instruments that pick up the particles that come from the sun. But in this video, we will take a close look at just two of them, two major instruments on board the spacecraft. One is called SUIT suit, which stands for Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope. The other one is Visible Line Emission Coronograph or VELC. These are the two major instruments. Both of these instruments were designed, developed and manufactured in India by Indian scientists entirely. These were made at Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, Ayuka, which is in Pune. The suit is meant to pick up the ultraviolet radiation technically called the near ultraviolet radiation from the core, of the, from the disk of the sun. Now this VELC will pick up the white light, split it into its constituents. There are four different instruments within VELC. One of them will analyze the white light. Another will analyze the infrared radiation and do what is called spectropolarimetry, which is basically seeing the orientation of the waves. It does this because the orientation gives some idea about how the magnetic field of the sun behaves. With this instrument, you can learn something about the changes in magnetic field of the sun. The third will analyze the green light and the fourth the red light. Collectively, all these give an idea, a good picture about the sun's magnetism, how its magnetism is behaving, how its temperature, what is happening inside the sun in terms of, you know, what happens just before it does a CME or a coronal mass eject and what is the effect of all this on the corona. If we study all these things together, we will be able to meet both the short term and long term objectives. So that is the importance of this Aditya L1 mission. It's a very unique mission because to take a spacecraft for 1.5 million kilometers and place it precisely at a point where it is subject to various pulls and pressures and keeping it there, it's not an easy joke. We have sent the Mangalyan to the, to the Mars, but just sending it there is not the point here. You have to keep it right at that precisely at that L1 point. Uh, somewhere the moon passes this way, some comet goes somewhere that way, it can cause disturbances and that can pull it out of that orbit uh, from L L1 point. ISRO scientists will, will need to be able to steer the spacecraft so carefully, so precisely and put it there and not only put it there but also keep it there. And by the way, it is also, as I said earlier, it is orbiting around uh, an invisible center. And because it is always orbiting, it is able to image, it is able to look at the sun from different angles. So, you know, it takes images at, from different angles and you put all these images together, you really get a three-dimensional view of the sun. Looking at the sun, doing this spectropolarimetry from space is, by the way, unique. Nobody has ever done that. People have done that from the ground, from earth, but an observatory in the space and doing this experiment from that observatory is being done for the first time. It's a very, very complex, very complicated mission. The most complicated mission that ISRO has ever undertaken.